this is my unboxing and initial impressions of my Keychron Q5 fully assembled mechanical keyboard that I, that I ordered direct from the Hong Kong area about six days ago. It only took six days for it to arrive from DHL Express. The total price of the package was $225 shipped, which includes the very steep $30 shipping fee. There was no way around that because no other options were offered by Keychron. I searched for coupons and discounts um, on the internet and, and there was none that I, I could find either. Overall, I wasn't quite sure whether I should go through with this order because uh, in perusing the website I saw that there was no satisfaction guarantee or anything like that so if I didn't like the keyboard or there was a minor issue that wasn't covered under their uh, parts and defects warranty I would have, I would have had to uh, pay for the return shipping back. My previous Keychron K4 wasn't of the highest quality that, that I thought. It was kind of standard, adequate quality. And so I wasn't entirely sure that this experience was going to be much better. I did look up uh, the founders and owners of the company, Will Ye and Sven Zhu, and they seemed to be reliable, dedicated keyboard nuts. Looking at the Keychron Q5, it had every feature that I wanted in the keyboard. The really standout features that I saw was this new metal volume knob on the top right, as well as promises of QMK VIA key remappability through software. There's just few, just a few nagging things about various keyboards that if you use them on a daily basis, you find, like for instance, I use a lot of uh, Word documents and such. And if you work on a very long, long document that goes on for hundreds of pages, it's very useful to be able to quickly do a control home or control end to go for, from the top to the bottom of the document without you know, moving your mouse, grabbing the right up down uh, slider and sliding it all the way down. A bit clunky. And so having a control home, control end, as well as some page up, page down movements can be useful using keyboard short shortcuts. And using the QMK VIA type of software, you can do that. You can also remap that volume knob to whatever else you might want to use besides uh, the music or sound volume up and down on your PC. Um, and this could include things like remapping it so that it slides the slider up and down on a long document. So prior to this purchase, I had also gotten a set of Holy Panda. 67 gram actuation tactile switches, the ones with the extra long 2 millimeter springs. And I've been sitting there waiting on this keyboard to be offered for many months. It was actually a bit frustrating because they delayed the rollout by a couple of months. Well, in any case, I finally received the package. My first impression was, uh, was good. Uh, box was heavily, heavily cushioned with uh, you know, air popcorn, basically. First thing I noticed was that it was extremely heavy. I've never wielded such a heavy keyboard in my life. It was much heavier than uh, I had even anticipated. I saw on the website that it said it was 2.2 kilograms, which is one pound. Now this keyboard is much heavier than one pound. so. And opening this up, I was impressed at the quality of the CNC aluminum machinery. This case looks like a thousand dollar case, basically. Far superior to the previous kind of matte, kind of tinny aluminum casing that the Keychron K4 version 1 or 2 had. 
Also, the knurling on the top right volume knob is very high quality. Thick aluminum knob, uh, heavy duty. It looks like it's gonna last forever. So the initial feel of the typing on the keyboard, right out of the box, uh, unaltered, was buttery smooth, luxurious, with really woody, deep, clocky sounds. No initial adventitious noise I could hear. I couldn't appreciate any tinniness, uh, rattle, um, any other unpleasantness. Now some people are overly sensitive to what they call pinging sounds. So if you listen to your uh, keystrokes at each release, sometimes there can be a kind of really faint, subtle, high-pitched ying, like a like a ting sound that some people uh, really get hypersensitive about. It's the inner spring within the switch that can kind of do that yinging noise as you release. It's usually just a really faint echo, but it can get into the heads of uh, like the truly neurotic types. And uh, some people notice that in some switches. Now, that has to do with the switch itself and not so much the keyboard or anything like that, but uh, lack of sound dampening and things like that. Uh, can uh, accentuate that sound. One of the things about this keyboard is that it comes with kind of surrounded true silicone, silicon gasketing, which acts to cushion, eliminate that kind of tinging, yinging release sound. Now, I really couldn't hear much of it. Only on a re uh, recording, I heard it here and there, uh, but it's not di displeasing to me. It's mostly uh, just woody clicks and clacks that I hear. Uh, when you elevate the keyboard on wood at the back, for instance, to increase the, the angulation of the keyboard, which is what I prefer, the sound changes a bit. I think it becomes, uh, the, the woody clicks and clacks becomes a bit clearer and a little, a little bit more uh, kind of echoey, maybe. The stabilizers on the space bar return, enter, and keys like that were smooth and dead solid. The screw-ins for those are of brass. Uh, I don't know how much of a difference that makes versus steel, but um, maybe just if nothing else, it gives you the sense that it makes it a bit more solid and woody. Probably the this overall has been the greatest out-of-the-box keyboard typing experience I've had. Uh, the provided OSA sculpted OEM height keycaps that Keychron came up with were definitely, it was sculpted. It was double shot, had a pleasing texture to it on uh, the PBT, and it has a very unique kind of ovoid profile at the face. So um, a very pleasant, high quality keycaps overall. But uh, what I didn't like about it, it is thinner, and to my sense, a bit of a slightly cheaper plastic quality compared to the ABS SA or the, the Dasher MT3 keycaps I was used to. So directly comparing the feel and the look, uh, I'm more than ever, more than ever before convinced that what I really like uh, are these taller sculptural keycaps, like the SA profile, or even better, the MT3 profile. So this kind of tall sculptural quality to the keycaps, along with the steep angulation, harks me back to my early school days uh, when I learned to type on a enormous vintage royal steel typewriter and then on a full-sized huge steel electric Smith Corona. I really liked that steep angle to it and I think uh, although it may not be ergo as ergonomic as laying it more flat or even uh, reversing the angulation as some people have said, uh, that's what I've uh, learned to type on, that's what I'm used to. So it, it makes me comfortable, more comfortable typing. Actually, when I measure it, I, I do find that I type faster when the keyboard is flatter, maybe at the five degree angle that they provided here. Now, they inclu included uh, Gatron Brown, what they call G Pro pre lubed switches, are really quite decent. It has a mid click 55 gram actuation tactility to it, very buttery smooth. Maybe the tactility could have been accentuated or enhanced if they had as is. I, mean, I think they're fine. But compared to my other tactile switches, I definitely pronounced, I definitely prefer the more pronounced bumps. And so, 
I did go ahead and switch out to the Holy Panda, or these might be actually what they would call fake or Holy Panda switches. It does have a 60, 67 gram actuation. The benefit of these, which I bought from a guy named Roselle on Amazon, is that I noticed that it has the uh, palm switches. It's kind of a, basically a lower friction plastic. And of course it has the very long spring, like a double length spring, which gives it the pronounced bump. These Holy Pandas that I bought were still expensive at 60 cents a piece uh, after shipping calculated, but compared to the drop, the, the original Holy, those currently are, are going for nearly a dollar 20 cents each. In comparison, I don't know how much of a difference it has, but really what I feel is the switch weight, the actuation grammage, so as well as um, quality control is important too, but I think these were. Uh, when I examined them, they look pretty good. They're very consistent in quality. I, I haven't had any problems with quality control issues on this set of Roselle Faker Holy, Holy Pandas. After installation, I could definitely feel the difference in switch tactility weight. I do appreciate the uh, tactile feel, the higher tactility, uh, due to my heavy finger typing that I've always done since I was, I was a child. The angulation of the base casing overall I think is adequate. I wish that they did have or provided screw-in top rear feet so that you can screw in different different um, height of feetage to allow steeper angulation. I don't want to risk drilling in these holes myself because aluminum is very easy to strip. I do like how much brighter the RGB glows. Because it's south facing you can see the lights very clear on. Uh, some people who are sensitive to light, they can just dial down the uh, intensity of the lighting by using, you know, the uh, func function W, function S. This is the way I think should, should be the standard way of placing the RGBs on every key switch or PCB. RGBs on every uh, key switch or PCB. I don't know why they face it north. The best part of the keyboard is, of course, the solid, heavy aluminum CNC machine casing. It has these very subtly beveled and rounded edges. It really nicely ensconces the keys within the case and makes it look like it matters. I don't need a keyboard any better than this. I'm definitely, at least in my mindset now, I'm definitely not going to be looking at any other keyboards and not looking to buy any more keyboards. I've already got over 11 relatively expensive mechanical keyboards and it's already like way too many. This one is the penultimate and the final one I'm going to buy and it's already way too premium in quality than I need even. I mean, looking at my keyboards, I thought about selling or getting rid of some of them but I was afraid that I'd be tempted to buy them again or rebuy them so I kind of hold on to them as a rebuy insurance because of my insanity basically. If I had to rank my keyboards in the order of premium feel, it would be this. Number one is definitely this, Keychron Q5. Number two, the Vortex Tab 90M. Number three, the Topra RealForce 104 UG High Profile. Number four, the Leopold FC980M. And then number 95, uh, sorry, and then number five is uh, the Keychron K4. Number six, my recently used Echo 3098B. The reason I, I gave the Echo a lower um, quality rating is because I have, it has this weird glitch where I have to turn on and off the switch at the bottom of the keyboard every anytime my computer wakes up from sleep. The keyboard otherwise goes dead, and that's kind of a pain to ask. Number seven on my list would be the Cooler Master Master Keys MK750, which is kind of like a standard uh, off-the-shelf big manufacturer mechanical keyboard. Number eight is the Royal Kludge RK100. I gave, it a, I gave that one a lower rating because it has various glitches and it's got a very cramped key cap placement. And number nine, ten on are the kind of the older 10, 15 year old mechanical keyboards I have like the generic Chinese Rosewell Helios keyboard from Newegg. And looking at that, this list, I can see that the features that make the keyboards feel premium are just general good fit and finish, weight of the keyboard, CNC machining, 
that's pretty much it for my initial impression evaluation of the Keychron Q5.